Exactly. Hi, everyone. My name is Anthony Lenzo, and I am the founder, owner, president, and operator of RC Land Productions. Based in Astoria, New York, we've been established since 1994. RC Land is an underwater video equipment rental house uh, that offers specialty equipment for the broadcast and feature industry here in New York and, uh, and worldwide. We offer a lot of specialty equipment, primarily underwater camera housings available for rent. Camera housings, underwater communications, and underwater lighting. Here I'm going to show you one of my favorite housings. This is the Hydroflex Rack 5 housing. This housing is super dynamic. It means it, it can accompany many different camera bodies. As camera technology changes constantly, this camera housing can accommodate many of those cameras. Cameras are inserted inside, on side, inside of a sled, and their lens height will be adjusted to the center of the dome or flat port lens. The operator has control of framing the housing and start-stop, while all of the features, power, remote lens control and data can be sent topside, fed to a crew topside or to a camera assistant topside. And that camera assistant can control all the functions, lens control functions and body functions of the camera. This is one of my favorite housings to use. Again, as technology changes, this housing will always be around to accommodate those bodies. Very simple, depending upon what size lens you use in there, you have port extensions, so you can extend your port for, for longer uh, zoom lenses or for short prime lenses. This one here has a dome in front, made for wider lenses, but it'll also accommodate a, a flat port lens. Has a five inch color viewfinder, uh, so it gives the operator uh, a video signal so he can see the framing, and it also will send a video signal topside for the uh, director to see. Its weight right now is probably 60 something pounds out of the water, but inside the water it's completely neutral and depth rated to about 100 feet. So again, this is the more popular one that you'll see out there. Uh, it's the one that you'll see on a lot of feature sets, and it's, it's one of my favorite housings on the market right now, and it's, it's designed and built by Hydroflex out in California. Okay, that's, the, that's, that that's this one. All right? That was good. You like that? Awesome. That was good. Thank you. Here we have one of our newest housings, which is for the Sony FX3. You can see it's really small, portable, easy to travel with, but it's also very versatile. It's going to give you full control of every function that the camera gives you topside, but in an underwater housing. Comes with a dome port, and uh, it also has a flat port option. What's good about this, like all of the housings that we offer, is that it always gives you a, an external video output monitor. Not only for the operator who's choosing, it'll be a 5.5 uh, inch color screen, but it'll also send the signal topside for the director who's gonna be looking and monitoring topside as well. Now with all of our gear, the director always has an option to communicate to the operator underwater and or to the crew, and especially to the talent. We have an underwater PA system that we normally send out with all of our equipment. So when the director's looking at his or her monitor topside, he or she can be giving direction down to the crew through an underwater PA system. It's one way um, for them to communicate to the talent on the water, keeping them super comfortable, and also giving direction to the operator who's, uh, who's underwater at the time. This housing, same thing, totally neutral, uh, underwater. It weighs about maybe uh, 15 pounds outside of the water, but it's completely sealed for about to about 100 meters. And, um, it's one of my favorite little housings that we just received, so I'm, I'm anxious to get in the water and start shooting with this one. But it is available for rental today at ARC Land in, in New York. Another one of our newest housings is the Nordicam for the ARRI 35. This one is gonna be hands down my favorite housing to shoot with this year. Since it's brand new, I'm excited to take it for a quick run in, in the water. But this one's made for ARRI's newest camera, the 35, and it's, it's same thing about about 50, maybe 65 meters underwater, although the majority of the shooting that we do for streaming companies is going to be in a pool or in a tank. Regardless, if I'm out there shooting natural history kind of work, 
I've got full control of, of all of the camera lens functions. I have zoom, focus, and iris underwater. But when you're working with streaming companies, it's going to be a little bit different. We'll have a lens control cable that goes topside. Same thing like the Hydroflex system. The, under, the camera AC topside will be controlling all of the lens functions. It'll give a video out signal to the director, just like all of the other housings. And um, for the monitors, well, actually, let's, let's start with the dome right here. This port here can extend. So again, depending upon a different glass, just like on the Hydroflex, just like on the Nordicam FX3 housing, you can extend your ports so they're all stackable. And you can go between dome or flat port depending upon how wide your lens is going to be. These ports are, again, stackable, you can extend, and when you're in a mode for your underwater, for your AC who's gonna be working with you underwater, everything goes on a standard uh, 15 millimeter rods. All of your C-Force motion motors will be mounted to those rods for lens control. And then on the um, operator side of the housing, you can see we have a 5.5 inch uh, viewfinder. This is a small HD 503 monitor. And again, you'll have your iris and your uh, focus, but you can designate that to whichever part of the lens you want to drive. If the top side AC has control, all these controls are locked out, so he or she will have that control top side. If you're in an underwater mode by yourself, shooting natural history work, you want operator control, all of your camera menu functions are on the oper operator side of the ca uh, camera. We're not really limited with any of the housings that are, that are manufactured today because most of these manufacturers, they, they design their housing so the operators can have the same control they have topside, they can do underwater, except for your media changes and your battery changes. But that's pretty much it. Again, this is the new Nauticam Alexa 35 housing that Air Sea Land has now available for rent. And uh, if you're interested in using it, it's definitely a, a, a step above, you know, some, uh, some of the web content providers work. But when you're getting out there, as you start to develop your niche and, and, and shooting and you start getting out there in more professional broadcast and or cinema, I'm sure you'll run across the Alexa 35 and I'm hoping that you take it underwater one day. So these two housings that you see in front of me are more underwater splash bags. Picture them like a dry suit for your camera. We have two different sizes that we created over 13 years ago, and to this day, nothing has changed much. What has changed is the camera technology. Knowing how fast cameras change, I'm sure every one of you at, know, at, at home know how fast manufacturers will change uh, camera bodies. It's really tougher as a manufacturer to keep up with all these different changes because it's, it's, it's expensive. And by the time they come up with all of their designs for these new camera body housings, the manufacturers release another housing or another camera. So that can get frustrating. We saw that and, and we know how fast that's going to change. So what we did at that time, over 13 years ago when HD cam was still available, we created the ASL full size splash bag. So from head to toe, it's about 24, 26 inches long. It'll fit a camera and lens in there with battery. Also, your lens control will go uh, wirelessly or hardwired, wirelessly if you're at the surface, if you're in handheld configuration, standing on a beach, knee deep in a lake water or pool water, you can dip your lens below water, but this housing will go up to two feet, excuse me, two meters uh, below the water surface. This one here is the compact housing. This one fits all of the Alexa bodies, all the mini bodies, all of the uh, black magic bodies. It's made, it's a little smaller in size. It's about um, 18 to 20 inches in length. And the same thing, you can have wireless control until you go underwater. That's when you're gonna lose your wireless signal, right? So you'll have wireless control, but then you can also have hardwired control for all your lens functions uh, when, when you're underwater. Everyone, each one comes with a five inch uh, color viewfinder and also gives you an SDI video out so that your director can see what's happening uh, topside. Uh, each standard cable is about 100 foot in length, all your BNC cables, your SDI cables. And right now these are equipped with flat port lenses, which is the most common lens that people like to shoot with when they have splash bags. It really helps the water to sheet off the lens. It has a two-stage four by six filter system inside. So if you wanted to put neutral density filters inside of the housing, you could stack two of them uh, inside as well as a polarizer. Uh, and it also has a purge valve. So as you're starting to descend, if you want it to sink a little bit, 
you open up your purge valve and you're going to bleed some of that excess air out, making this uh, housing a little bit more negative so that you can get it below the surface. The beauty about this housing is that you can also mount it to a crane. It's got these handles so you can just hold the housing, uh, the housing out of the water or in the water directly like this or flip the handles upside down and throw on a shoulder mount so you can operate in handheld mode. Again, this is, this is one of our oldest housings, 13 years, although we've had everything reskinned, so it's all new shells on there. However, it's one that we know will, will never really be outdated because it's going to be able to, uh, to accompany any of the new uh, cameras that come out whenever they come out. So the last thing I want to talk to you all about is to me one of the most critical things that is necessary for underwater production, and that's underwater communication. I can't tell you how often it is when I'll hear back from a crew saying, yeah, we've had an underwater camera on the project, but it just took all day communicating down to the underwater camera operator. There's ways to solve that. We have a couple of pieces of equipment. One is an underwater PA system, which is essentially an underwater speaker. You drop that in the water, and the director can talk to not only the operator, but to the talent that's underwater. And if it's a talent that's holding his or her breath, you're going to keep that person really comfortable because first, they can hear what you're saying. They kind of keep calm because they want to hear what you're saying. They'll take direction better, and you're going to get your shot off like just as you wanted, just as pictured. The other thing is an underwater communication mask. Now we use these in two different, in two different situations. One, I can be underwater and I can be talking to the crew. So what I'll do is I'll send my signal topside, send it back down through an underwater PA system so that on a loudspeaker, I can talk to everybody underwater. If something needs to be repositioned, if I need to talk to a safety diver or a stunt diver underwater, if I need to move a light. Everybody can hear me talking underwater. The director and I can also have a communication set back, going back and forth from topside to underwater. I put a speaker topside on the pool floor deck. Everybody can hear what's going on. This is critical when working underwater just to have this communication where a lot of people think you can have it. So the other situation that I have is um, I can have a journalist underwater. We can be in an ocean anywhere around the world, and I can dial into a studio anywhere else around the world. Let's say it's New York, for example. So the journalist or the host can be talking to the studio in New York. They can hear the studio in New York, and they can also be talking to a guest underwater. It's a four-wire system. So once those uh, wires come to the surface, we can patch and route those wires to do whatever it is that we need to do, whether it's dialing it into a cell phone to talk to a, a studio in New York or anywhere in the United States or anywhere in the world, or diver to diver. They need to crosstalk to talk to one another. As an operator, I can hear that communication happening, and I'll be able to follow the action by listening to what my host or my guest underwater is saying. We've also done in the past where we can wire these up so you can do live Zoom chats underwater. You can have a Q&A session with someone underwater via Zoom. You can do this through a microwave link. You can do it through a live view uplink through a cellular backpack. There's a number of different ways. Underwater communications to, my, to me is essential. Ocean Technology makes this system. We've been carrying their gear for a number of years. And like I said, it's crystal clear. With this particular mask, which is one of their newest masks, you can actually equalize underwater. So you can get rid of that that, that nose block that would normally be in a full face mask that would cause some problems with equalization. These masks are super comfortable. They, they, they seal quite nicely. And uh, like I said, it's one of the most critical pieces of underwater production that you'll need. If you use it once, you're never gonna wanna go back to not having any communication underwater. So thanks again for taking the time to watch this video on YouTube and to learn a little bit about what Air Sea Land Productions has to offer here for rent in New York. And um, hope to see you at the next Cinegear Expo.